Imagine if for every movie they did a monologue about the movie. Ugh. It might even horrify you. Ian, I don't think we should watch this. I might be horrified. Blowing up this postage stamp aspect ratio on my 50-something inch TV. It's funny. In HD, where the quality is like, what, 360? I'd say 480. It's pretty hilarious, I gotta say. What kind of whale do you think he is? That looks like Nosferatu in the background. Abraham Van Sloan. He was Van Helsing in Dracula. Edward Van Sloan. Edward, yeah. Edward Van Sloan. Yeah, I mix up the names. They both have Well, Van. he's also Van Helsing in this movie, Their I think. names are bisected by the word Van. Both the character and the actor. <laughs> uh, I, what for if... <laughs> I forget how much I love not Igor in this movie. How... What if you show up to a funeral making that face and just creep up? Why does he have a lamp with a bell in it? Can you answer that question? I can't answer many questions, Ian. Legend says this guy is where they got the inspiration for Frosty the Snowman. I don't see the eyes made out of coal, but he does have a thick, juicy ass. What was so this? is Igor like... That's not Igor. We already determined Sorry, that. is Igor knockoff? Is he mentally challenged? Um, he has a hunchback. Yeah, but he acts dumb. Well, I think it's because he's dumb. Okay, so he's dumb and also is hunchback. Yeah. Okay. The moon's rising. We've no time to lose. How long does it take to dig a grave? Of freshly dug soil. Now, if this wasn't freshly dug soil, it'd be hard, there'd be rocks, it'd be fucking annoying. But that soil was just dug up for a casket, so it should take, like, 15 minutes. He's just resting, waiting for a new life to come. Audience. Staring directly at us, telling us what's happening. He looks like a big Lego piece. Who, Igor? No, the fucking oh, Lego that guy? piece they took out of the ground. Uh, it's like the straight Tetris block. They check his brain, and then he goes, Darn, his neck's broken. It's not usable. You yeah, when you hang someone, the brain stem snaps. Yeah, you so think, the brain uh, is unusable. You'd think uh, fucking Mr. Intelligent over here would know that. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen... He has the best voice in Dracula, and he has the best voice in Frankenstein. This is the least security universe. Actually, I can't even knock it for that, because the university we go to is an open campus, and you can walk into any building at any time of day. Except night. Uh, I walk in the Math and Science Center at, like, 11 p.m., and they close at, like, 7. They don't allow people in, but they don't lock the doors. I forgot his name. Is it Chips? Oh, Clark Gable is in this? So, Victor isn't the one who makes the monster. Nope, not originally. Movie. Is that how it is in the book, or no? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, it's his middle name is Henry. Victor Henry Frankenstein. So for the movie, they... Made him two separate characters, I guess. Okay. This is Clark Gable, and the other guy is not Clark Gable. <laughs> Neither of them are Clark Gable. I'm coming with you. But Elizabeth, you can't do that. I must. I'll be ready in a minute. I love, like, the tonal shifts in old movies' arguments. The wife will just be like, How dare you think this? And then the next instant she's like, I'll just be there at this time. That's Henry's fiance. That's Victor. That's Anne of Green Gable. And that's, uh, that's Van Helsing. Put him right next to a microscope. <laughs> so while he talks, he sounds smarter. <laughs> you know how in, um, science fiction movies they need a character to explain the exposition of the bullshit science? Yeah. A good tactic is to put them near scientific equipment so that when they talk, you go, Wow, they know what they're talking about. I mean, so far, this already is way the fuck better than all the silent movies. I don't know if it's going to beat Dracula. You know how I, I thought this movie was better than Dracula. Dracula's really, really good, though. Mm -hmm. So they're both they're both almost equal. I mean, I don't remember much from it because I can't remember shit. Is that a Lego guy? No, it's a Lego piece, not a Lego guy. This seems, for the time, very expensive for him to build. What, this set? Yeah, not the set. I mean, uh -oh. in the movie, I mean, like, he'd have to buy all of that metal shit and string it up in a certain way. He robs graves. Do you think he's buying any of this? Why is he... You know who my favorite character is? Chips over here. What's, uh, not Igor's real name? I think it's actually Mass. Master Splinter? Spritz. There you go. Fritz. You Sprite the drink. I love how his hair is, like, perfectly gelled into the Frankenstein look, even though he's just been dead for months. Yeah, your hair never stops growing, even if you die. It also, on the day that you get dug up, is salon styled into the Frankenstein. Yeah, it's just my dumb bitch wife. Send her away. I'm busy making a fake monster. Man. Is that what's happening in the scene? Yeah. It speaks to the talent of the writer when more things are delivered through subtext than people yeah. explaining what's happening. Like you see here, when he says, "Send them away," he doesn't even know who it is for one. Mm -hmm. But no matter who it is, he doesn't give a fuck. Even if it is his wife, which it happens to be. The second he get in, please, dear, why don't you go away? 
my experiment is almost He's literally like, you are ruining everything? <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> lovely <laughs> wife? Fucking asshole. You think I'm crazy? And he's it's looking at It's the second craziest stare look in the whole movie. We're spoiled with modern day cinema like being so coming. fucking modern good. Modern day cinnamon is what you I said. I said cinnamon. <laughs> which, by the way, not how it's... It's cinema. It's We're cinema, spoiled. but you like a little bit of cinnamon toast crunch on top. Oh, that sounds so good. You see a movie like this, no special effects. The set is a Lego. And then one of those orbs that you touch it and the electricity crazy. goes to your finger. And that's the whole lab. And there's a hat up there. He's letting the good guys, quote unquote, know too much about his evil plan. I don't think he's the villain. Uh, well, I mean, by the end of the story... He causes the most evil. I don't think this is inherently bad. The way he does it, where he calls himself God, he's got like a God complex, obviously. It's not morally good. You know sure it mean? is. I mean, I think the same thing, so. Look at Boris Karloff's awkward white guy legs. You think that's why the monster doesn't wear shorts? That's why he's screaming out. He's, oh, my oh, legs are my too legs. ugly. legs, I need to hit the gym, fail. So looking at the original yes. Igor character, yes. it makes a lot of sense why Daniel Radcliffe played the Igor character in the new movie, because he looks eerily similar to him. Even though that Victor Frankenstein movie was not universal, so they couldn't use anything specific to universal, so the monster looked nothing like our version of Frankenstein um, that we know in our head. What do you think of it? What I think of the movie? Yeah. It was fine, right? I liked it. Um, I didn't love it. Yeah, I, I thought felt it was like decent. a lot of what they did with um, the reveal was a bit bleh. Like, all the monster really did was just jump around and hit things a bit for yeah. two minutes. You know what I mean? And I know the movie's called Victor Frankenstein. It's not about the monster, but the stuff that I found interesting was when the monsters were on screen. Like, the monster dog at one point was running around biting people. That was fucking cool. Oh, I know what it feels like to be gone. That's such a good scene. I'm sorry. It's so good. It's obviously an early movie, so therefore it's just a play but filmed. So all of the actors involved kind of pause when another actor is ready to do their line and or bit. So they all run over to him. And then when he he yells the god line, they all just kind of freeze and stare at him so that he can do his little thing, and then they resume grabbing him. Let the best character in the film pop. pretty girl to come back to. <laughs> Will you tell me that? He's got the best voice. <clears throat> best voice, casual he sexism. Is, whenever someone makes a voice like this, he's the stereotype you think of in your head. Old... Old man smoking a big long pipe wearing a fez. With a mustache, Ian. Bathrobe. <laughs> Bathrobe slash suit combo by a fireplace, which is right behind him. I don't <laughs> give a damn what he says. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of my day. Oh, Bobby Moynihan's in this. He's a burger master. That's not his title, is that it? Is that what they called him? Well, he looks like a burger man. He's just fucking fat. <laughs> Sir, everything is ready. I know that dog. <laughs> I can just hear the two go back and forth for two hours. Fucking, Sorry, an hour and nine minutes. Fucking burger master over here, <laughs> and then. <laughs> it sounds like as time goes on, he has more and more of a heat stroke. I feel like at the end of the movie, he's just gonna like pass out. Listen, he's trying really hard. Is he smoking a Dubert? It's a fat. Fresh blunter, fam. The brain that was stolen from my laboratory was a criminal brain. Oh shit. Why, well, it's almost like your assistant is a fucking idiot. You know how Frankenstein and X Men both You're deal with the themes of oppression of a different kind of person? And how, like, it can be a, like a metaphor for, like, gay people or yeah. anything that isn't the majority? Yeah. I've already talked about how I don't think that X-Men is a good metaphor for that because there, there's something inherently dangerous about having a superpower and it is correct to fear someone who could level a building with their eyes versus nothing inherently evil about being gay. Frankenstein has the same problem because he has... Oh, well, that's fucking terrifying. He has the brain of a serial killer. So there is something inherently dangerous about him specifically. And I think people are correct to fear him if he's gonna start fucking killing people. I mean, you know what I mean? So I don't think it's like an issue of like, does he deserve rights? Yeah, he deserves rights, but you also need to make sure that he's not- A serial killer. A serial killer, killing people in a serialish manner. Well, I guess you, that's not a bad allegory though, because people think that of people of a different skin color. Oh, black crime, people you know what I mean? People think that, or rather, racists think God. that peop, uh, black people are inherently evil. But, but that's the same ideology. Objectively, Objectively, black people are not any more or less dangerous than a, than a white guy. Try explaining it to a racist. No, but that's a confusion that racists have. And this is a fact that Frankenstein is more dangerous than everyone else around him. And it's a fact that Cyclops is more dangerous than a regular dude. Well, is it? 
Yeah, because if he opens his eyes and looks at anything without glasses... No, I mean Frankenstein, oh. not Cyclops. Cyclops is a um, laser beam man. Actually, yeah, Frankenstein if more so. he's treated properly, which we see, mm-hmm. he doesn't have that violent reaction. Oh, so you're saying but that... But Fritz pisses him off and causes that. So you're saying that um, there is an inherent thing where he wants to kill people... But, but he keeps it under wraps. He most keeps of it under time. wraps, and also the fact that he's a reanimated body means that his brain is a lot lower IQ than regular. Yeah. So he's stupid. He's a big dumb child that ends up getting like... abused and taking out his frustration, not okay. realizing how big he is. Okay, so this you know is a I better mean? metaphor than X Men then. Yeah, I'd because say so. it's about how they're handled. Go and sit down. What a hulking mass of a man. I don't even think he's on a stage or anything. I think he's just that much bigger than him, and the camera makes it look even bigger. This is one of the best fucking performances. The fucking monster. By saying no words. He's like a toddler, that, oh, right there. Yeah, the, you factor in the abuse as well. He's like whipping at his fucking legs and his feet, and then he just doesn't leave it alone. Is this where Fritz dies? No. Damn it. I feel no remorse for Fritz. Yeah, he's a dick! He's a dick, and he caused the problem of putting the serial killer brain in him anyway. Holy shit! He went out of his way to hang Fritz. Get me a hypodermic needle. It's murder. Don't guns exist in this time? Yeah, but a needle of something would be way easier. Really? Because I'm pretty sure that guy can withstand a gunshot. To like what about any more part than of one anything gunshot? but his head. What about a second gunshot? Um, this is what, the 20s, 30s? No, 1818 Ooh. is when the book was written. When were muskets a thing? Yeah, so they only had like muskets. Oh, yeah, pirates. And had flintlock them. pistols. That's what pirates had in the 1700s, so 100 years after that, they got some. Yeah, but they weaponry. barely have anything good. It looks like Robert De Niro. Dragged a 6 foot 8 hulking monster over here. Damn it, Henry, why'd you have to pick body parts from bodybuilders? <laughs> Yeah, that guy funny. getting fed up with everything around him is a work of art. Of course, he has a fucking bowler hat and cane and professional suit with bow tie now. He had a bow tie when he was wearing his fucking pajamas. I know. He never takes it off. It's just a part of his neck. He's a monocle! <gasps> if you weren't a diseased maniac, this wouldn't be a fucking problem. He's not a diseased maniac. He's both of those things. No, 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 no. Alright, would you rather live mm-hmm. in the Baron's castle? Or an abandoned tower. Baron's would... castle because the Baron's in it. And oh, I could live with him. Bet. Wait, but the monster is, is in the other in one. The other one. So added benefit of not dying. No no no. I love the way he lumbers around. You know, when you came over to do the show today and I looked out my window and you got out of your car, that's how you walked up to the door. I always just lumber. Aimlessly and look in every direction. Without bending any limbs. <laughs> <laughs> <My> <laughs> This is ironic yeah. foreshadowing. <laughs> give the servants champagne. Don't give them the good shit. Don't waste good shit on petty servants. Ugh, oh, they're women too. They don't deserve rights. And then tomorrow, I'll invent Monopoly and put my face all over the board. It looks like the city where Gwyn Glyn, from The Man Who Laughs, jumped off the building and sword fought a guy. That movie sucked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. It's this scene. Having very little working memory for this movie, this scene is, uh, it's something. Kiss your child on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> His fucking face. You know what the thing is, though? Like, look. He's not aggressive. Give it 30 seconds. <laughs> it's like Of Mice and Men, but there's no George. That's another classic, isn't it? It is another classic, with very similar themes. A lot of classics, at least for literature and stuff, are good. And then there are some that you just look at and you're like, how did this become a classic? You've read, um, no. Catcher on the Rye. Yes. It's fucking terrible. I hate that book. There's no Barrymore What's the main... She, she's not close at all. Yeah, there's right. no Barrymore and Dracula either. Do you think Barrymore's are exclusive to silent, silent movies? <laughs> Hello! Also, oh. what kind of fucking ninja body parts did he put into Frankenstein for him to be just completely dead silent around her? Maybe she's dead. Look at his hair. 
even though they've been talking. She can read lips. Give me that ass. Get over here. <laughs> Give me thought. that fucking booty. Oh, that's fucking dark. Like, Hello, this him. is my drowned daughter. Yeah. How are you doing today? Everyone's happy, and then like as he walks around them, everyone near him is just like, oh shit, and everything just drops. He's like the plague. Isn't, this is like tough to watch. It's just so depressing. One of the movies in this universe, and Ed, aren't there Edgar Allan Poe things in this? Yes, eight of them. Which ones? All of his popular ones, I think. Fucking uh, good. But dude. the last two or three become like almost comedies. No. Like they kind of, as they go on, lose their darkness, quote unquote. It's when a tragedy becomes like darkly funny. Gallows humor? Yeah. No, I think it's literally just like the tone gets lighter as they no, go on. I don't want that. Which is the bad version. Gallows humor is good. I'm thinking like the Mask of the Red Death. I love that's my favorite fucking thing. I love that. And Red Death. like the Cask of Amontillado. It's a good one too. Never heard of it until this moment. Whatever happens, you understand? He didn't say whatever happens or whatever happens. It's whatever happens. <laughs> and then we'll work with Batman to stop the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> the man who laughs. Made the Joker. This made Commissioner Gordon. We're probably gonna incorporate all the Hammer monster movies too, which Listen, has Christopher Lee in like four or five Dracula movies as Dracula. Listen, Christopher Lee's immensely talented. He's I'm just the saying. fucking best. He's in one of the greatest trilogies ever made. He's in one of the worst trilogies ever made. Oh, in one of the greatest trilogies ever made. You mean Star Wars prequel trilogy? Yes, and one of the worst being that dumb Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yep. Who Thank even you. likes that? That the guy doesn't have a torch. How useless is he? What was the name of the dog from The Man Who Laughs? Homo. He's homo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking homo. Sorry. <laughs> you know, in a non homosexually discriminating way. Yeah, his name is Homo. Why would you name a dog that anyway? Oh, they're walking up that pretty sweet mural of a background. I like how the monster's always just so confused about everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in the movie where the monster is confident about what he's doing. I wish movies were an hour and nine minutes. I'd watch way more of them. Ooh, cinematography. That ragdoll flying off. And oh, shit! Slamming into that. This is pretty fucking sad, too. Yeah. Because, again, it ties back to the whole, the whole like, he doesn't understand anything around him at yeah, any point. Yeah, he's sad and confused. And now he's gonna die at his most sad and most confused. So, the first Dracula, the first Frankenstein, and the first Godzilla are all movies where the monster who terrorizes the city dies at the end. And they have 50 sequels of the first of which where they come back and they never die afterwards. We don't see Dracula die. It's very much implied, though. He had it's the knife. Implied, but he walked to the coffin and it cut. You remember how um, he gave his cross to the other guy? Yeah. He doesn't have anything to protect him from Dracula's witch magic without that cross. Here, it's very heavily implied that he dies. It's situation. the classic ideology of we'll make a standalone thing about this character and kill him at the end, and it's a great thing. But everyone loves the character so much that now we gotta bring him back and we never gotta kill him again. Yeah. And you see him die in the... You don't mm -hmm. see him die, but it's heavily implied. Like, it's super heavily implied that Frankenstein doesn't live through fire. Mr. Henry doesn't need... Again, he didn't say doesn't or didn't. It's didn't. Oh, out of ten. We never did that. Oh, I, I gave it a nine the first time. I'm giving it a nine this time. Uh, I'm also giving it an eight. We gave Dracula and Frankenstein reverse ratings to for each other. Yep. I like that. The next one up is, uh... Abbott and Costello be Abbott and Costello. Murders in the room or Morge. I can say it. Oh, this is gonna suck ass. It's oh. it's the first Poe adaptation. Okay. So maybe Maybe they'll do good. Maybe it'll be good. It stars Bella Lugosi as well. Is that Dracula? That's Dracula, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 